Yes, you can still shoot down UAVs in Modern Warfare 3. This year's Call of Duty release turns back to the Modern Warfare side of things with a campaign that picks up minutes after the conclusion of 2009's eye-stabbing, civilian-shredding adventure and multiplayer that similarly follows in that game's footsteps. There's no sugarcoating it. This is another Call of Duty game. The multiplayer still works and provides you with even newer ways to level up and prestige and unlock attachments and all that good stuff. The changes aren't dramatic, but the real bummer is that some of the changes feel like a step backwards when compared to the last couple of games in the series. The core of Call of Duty is still incredibly solid, and the multiplayer is still awfully thrilling, but this might be the least creative game to bear the Call of Duty name since Call of Duty 3. That probably sounds sorta of harsh. The bulk of that feeling comes from the campaign. The game opens with the dialogue from the end of MW2. Soap and Price are near death and wanted by every faction in the world, and it's up to Nikolai to get them out of there. The world is still at war with Russian warships sitting just outside New York. Things are, in a word, grim. The structure of the campaign follows the now standard formula for a Call of Duty adventure. You'll swap back and forth from one perspective in theater of war to another as you alternate between chasing down the evil ultra-nationalist Russian Makarov and fighting back the misguided Russian forces that Makarov duped into war with the US. This tale feels like it's mostly told by slapping your character into a moving vehicle and letting him fire on other moving targets. I'm probably exaggerating a bit here, but it felt like I spent at least half of the game in some sort of super scripted vehicle sequence. In one spot I'm driving a tiny boat through a gauntlet of exploding Russian ships. In another I'm riding a shotgun in a van while my posse chases down and t-bones a bad guy. And so on. Did someone at some point decide that walking was an uncool thing to feature in video games this year? The crazy part is that these portions of the game look really great and come across as super intense because everything on all sides of you is constantly blowing up. If they turned this into a movie, Michael Bay would have to retire because this game outexplodes everything he's ever done. It makes Bad Boys 2 look like a quiet, introspective look at criminal masterminds. It just got real. Landmarks get destroyed, military hardware gets destroyed, buildings get destroyed, hell. The game even throws in a weirdly ham-fisted attempt to make the war hit home with a little tug at the heartstrings that just feels laughable. This doubles as the game's you might want to skip this if you're easily offended moment, but it's just kind of lame. For as much as it isn't exactly fun to go through what might be the franchise's most hand-holdy campaign yet from a gameplay perspective, the single player is surprisingly exciting to look at as you play. All those vehicle sequences feel nice and custom, and like I said, it's constantly jumping off around you for the bulk of the game. The story side of things takes a real backseat at first, but if you care about the interplay between Price, Soap, and Makarov, it manages to get reasonably interesting through the back third of the game. It gives you a slightly different perspective on the major events of the two previous Modern Warfare games, and ends with an alarming amount of closure. Game stories simply don't end anymore and it was a little shocking to see how everything comes together. Obviously, this isn't the end for the Call of Duty franchise, but I'd be pretty surprised if they try to put out a game called Modern Warfare 4 in a couple of years. From there, the game drives you over to Spec Ops, which returns from Modern Warfare 2 with a batch of new missions, a new survival mode, and an interesting take on the multiplayer mode's player progression. The missions are, as before, one-off adventures for two players, some of which are twists on campaign missions, while others have you doing some unique stuff. Some of these split the two players into different roles, putting one behind stationary gun turrets while the other has to get from point A to point B before time expires. They're a lot of fun. The survival mode is a horde type mode that takes place on the multiplayer maps, and this is where the Spec Ops level progression comes into play. This infinite mode gives you waves of increasingly difficult enemies, starting with idiot soldiers armed with shotguns and quickly escalating into heavily armed and armored soldiers, juggernauts, helicopters, and dogs strapped with C4 explosives. Forget the warning thing in the campaign. Exploding dogs might actually be the most messed up and awesome thing in all of Modern Warfare 3. Between waves, you'll have time to run to various stations around the level to buy and upgrade your weapons, get more grenades, or purchase one-use airstrikes like Predator missiles, Predator missile ready for deployment, or choppers that drop in a perk for you to use. 
As someone who continues to not care about any sort of zombie mode in the Call of Duty games, the return of Spec Ops is great to see. The only catch is that it's still just a two-player mode. It should have been four. Of course, then there's the proper competitive multiplayer. For most of you, this is probably the reason you show up in the first place, and it's once again a fast-moving game of shoot that guy. The modes you expect to see here are absolutely here, like Headquarters Pro, Domination, Sabotage, you know. The new match-made modes are Kill Confirmed, which forces you to collect dog tags from the enemies you kill in order to score points, Kill Confirmed, and Team Defender, which is a one-flag type of match where the team that currently holds the flag gets double points for its kills. You can also get into new types of private match games, and versions of the Black Ops Gun Game and One in the Chamber are here alongside a capture and hold mode called Drop Zone, and a few games that have players running around in juggernaut armor. The private match games are goofier twists on the standard Call of Duty gameplay, but there's no player matching, which makes them nearly impossible to play unless you're willing to round up a crew of friends and try them out. The way you gain levels and earn abilities has changed again. The currency system from Black Ops has been tossed out in favor of more meters to fill. Now, each weapon in the game has a level associated with it, and as you use a weapon, it'll earn XP. This unlocks the camo skins and attachments for each weapon, as well as a new weapon proficiency perk that lets you equip things like Kick, which lowers the recoil for a given gun. Dual attachments have been moved from the player level perk system down into the weapon proficiencies, which is a nice touch. Perks work the same way they always have, with some new perks that switch up the way you outfit your soldiers. It's still possible to go completely silent and invisible, which is how I usually like to play, but there are some interesting ideas like Recon, which paints targets for your team when you hit them with explosive damage. The pro version of that perk expands it to include bullet damage. Pro versions of perks, of course, are unlocked using the standard perks effectively as before. The killstreak system is back and it's changed in some smart ways that allow lesser players to still call in a lot of cool bonus stuff without making it feel like the airspace is always full. This feature has players pick one of three strike packages which alter the way that killstreak bonuses are earned and which ones you can choose from. Assault is the old style system that resets after you die. Support doesn't reset, but most of its available options are, you know, support powers. So you call in more UAVs or drop a duffel bag that teammates can use to equip ballistic vests or operate a goofy little recon helicopter that can tag enemies and so on. Specialist ditches all of the old kill streaks and instead just gives you more perks. You can set your strike package and the available bonuses on a per class basis. This stuff is the most dramatic change across the entire game. I will grant you, it is not that dramatic if you aren't already way into this stuff. But if you're a player that can't get a good kill streak going, you'll probably appreciate the way the support package works. If you care at all about the characters from Modern Warfare 2, or if you just want to see a bunch of explosions, the campaign still manages to be pretty satisfying, even if playing through it isn't all that exciting. The multiplayer is largely the same as it has been, which is to say that if it gets its hooks in you, you're likely to lose hours and hours to its fun, easy to pick up structure. And the Spec Ops mode is just flat out great, even if the player count feels a little low. It's hard not to think about the future of Call of Duty and think that they're going to have to make more dramatic changes than they're making if Activision wants this thing to stay as hot as it has been. But if you stop thinking about, eh, if you just stop thinking, you'll find that this year's game is still a whole lot of fun.